Welcome to this video on the differential diagnoses of the cardiovascular system. In this video, we'll cover the common diagnoses that present with chest pain and other cardiovascular symptoms. We will be learning about the main symptoms that immediately help you identify a patient's disease while history taking or even during an exam. So, let's get started. The first diagnosis we'll cover is myocardial infarction, MI, or commonly known as heart attack. MI presents with central, tight pain lasting more than 20 minutes and may radiate to the left shoulder and neck. It can also cause epigastric pain, palpitations, sweating, nausea, vomiting, and shortness of breath. Patients experiencing myocardial infarction are typically relieved with nitrate medication. Stable angina pectoris presents with tight or heavy chest pain that may radiate, especially during exertion or in cold, windy weather. It is typically relieved with nitrate medication in rest and is often associated with breathlessness. Unstable angina pectoris presents with central chest pain lasting more than 20 minutes at rest. The pain also does not go away with rest or nitrate medication and is considered a typical medical emergency. Aortic dissection presents with sudden, severe chest pain radiating between the shoulder blades. It may cause tearing pain and impinge or collide on mediastinal structures, leading to shortness of breath and dysphagia. Risk factors include congenital Marfan syndrome and hypertension, Pericarditis presents with sharp, pleuritic chest pain that may radiate to the neck. Patients may also present with a fever and dyspnea while reclining. Symptoms are worse when lying down, coughing or taking a deep breath but are relieved by sitting up and leaning forward. Also, patients do feel relieved while taking NSAIDs. Infective endocarditis presents with fever, chills, night sweats, arthralgia, valvular problems leading to dyspnea and pulmonary edema, nausea, vomiting, fatigue, chest pain when breathing, and flu-like symptoms. Patients may have a history of dental or surgical procedures, especially those with prosthetic valves. Rheumatic heart disease presents with fever, dyspnea, migratory polyarthritis, erythema marginatum, chest pain, palpitations, Sydenham chorea, and subcutaneous nodules. Patients may have a history of sore throat and a recent streptococcal infection. Deep vein thrombosis or DVT presents with pain in the legs that disappears after walking a certain distance. Swelling, redness, and warmth may also occur. Frequent travelers, patients with coagulative disorders, or those who have had a leg injury or are on OCPs may develop DVT. It can lead to pulmonary embolism and is typically associated with unilateral ankle swelling. In summary, it's important to ask about Virchow's triad when suspecting DVT and pulmonary embolism. Congestive cardiac failure presents with dyspnea, orthopnea, paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea, ankle swelling without pain, weight gain, and pulmonary edema. Orthostatic hypotension presents with syncope and is common in patients taking antihypertensive drugs like nitrates and ACE inhibitors. It can also occur when fasting, dehydrated, or getting up quickly from a sitting position. Atrial fibrillation is a condition where the heart beats suddenly, fast, and irregularly. It is often accompanied by palpitations and dyspnea. Symptoms can worsen with exercise or alcohol consumption. On the other hand, ectopic beats are characterized by a sudden onset of missed or thumping heartbeats. It can worsen during rest and can be relieved by walking. Triggers for ectopic beats can include caffeine and alcohol. Patients presenting with cardiovascular problems usually present with these symptoms. Before coming to the conclusive differential diagnosis, it's important not to be hasty and continue with a systemic review to confirm the diagnosis and look for red flags. Now, let's discuss how a systemic review helps us to diagnose the disease. 
Systemic review involves evaluating the patient's weight loss, fever, appetite, bowel movement, allergies, and medication compliance. Weight loss, fever, and a lack of appetite may indicate endocarditis, while a recent sore throat may indicate rheumatic fever. Coughing may be a sign of pulmonary vascular disorders, while COPD may lead to core pulmonale. Weight gain may indicate heart failure. Taking the patient's past medical history is crucial in determining the diagnosis. Previous medical conditions such as IHD, MI, angioplasty, hospitalization, hypertension, cholesterol, and diabetes can all impact the cardiovascular system. It's important to inquire about family history. Genetic disorders like congenital Marfan syndrome can play a role in cardiovascular disease and it's crucial to identify these potential risk factors. Finally, social history can also provide valuable insights. Work, smoking, alcohol consumption, diet, and overseas travel for DVT can all contribute to cardiovascular disease. Before concluding, it's important to discuss any ideas, concerns, and expectations that the patient may have. This can help guide the diagnostic process and ensure that the patient's needs are met. In conclusion, the differential diagnosis of the cardiovascular system involves evaluating symptoms like chest pain, palpitations, dyspnea, orthopnea, syncope, leg pain, etc. Conducting a systemic review, taking past medical and social history, and identifying genetic disorders are all crucial in determining the diagnosis. Remember to address any ideas, concerns, and expectations that the patient may have to ensure that they receive the best possible care. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more medical content.